Well, good morning, friends. I, it, 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 it's hard to try to put a stop to the chatter because I know there are people seeing each other who don't normally get to see each other as we have 9.30 folks mingling with 11 o'clock folks. What a, what a joy it is to get together to meet some new people who you've gone to church with for perhaps a dozen years. You just don't know it. So feel free to stick around, chat, and meet what might be some new people at the end of this service, because it was, it was hard to start on time this, this morning. Um, friends, we, we appreciate so much you making worship today a part of your holiday weekend. If, if you're here with us in person or if you're worshiping with us online, please be sure to fill out your Connect card, either digital or paper. You can check out all of the announcements in your bulletin or your digital worship guide. Just a couple of things to highlight for us before we get underway this morning. Camp S'more, our first Camp S'more is fast approaching, friends. July 7th and July 18th and 19th. The 18th and 19th will be our first edition of Camp S'more. If you have not yet gotten with Kelly about how you can volunteer or help out, there's still time to do that, I'm sure. I bet she would love to hear from you. Plus, don't fr forget to register your kids and sign them up so we know that they are coming. Along with that, the service project for the, camp, for the first Camp S'more is going to be Souls for Souls. We'll be collecting some shoe donations. There's a bin set up downstairs. I think there's going to be a second bin coming at some point, if I understood and it, it is also here in us. We will have two bins. You can bring in new or gently used old shoes that we will be collecting throughout the month of July, I believe. So if you have some old shoes sitting a, a around, maybe instead of the trash, we can donate those and recycle and reuse them. One more announcement, and that is starting this Wednesday. It's coming up Wednesday the 7th. We'll be back over in Asbury Chapel for Asbury at Night. This is going to be just the time of breaking bread. We're going to eat some dinner, and we're going to have a time of discussion. That's going to start at 6.30. If the weather is especially beautiful, we will eat outside. If it's a little hot or rainy, we will meet inside. We've rearranged the pews. We're going to set up some tables and some chairs for us to sit in small groups and just gather for some fellowship for some discussion. I promise, I promise, there will be no sermon at Asbury at night. There's going to be food and a time to discuss. And if you'd like to come be a part of that, or you'd like to invite some folks and bring them to that. Wednesdays in July is what we have booked for right now, and we would love for you to come and be a part of that. Plenty of other stuff in your bulletin or in your online worship guide. But right now, friend, let, friends, let, let's take a nice collective deep breath. And let's take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds as Marianne transitions us into a time of worship with the prelude.
Friends, I invite you, if you are able, to stand for this morning's call to worship. You can find it there in your bulletin or in your online worship guide as well, if you pulled that up. This comes from Psalm 48. As we have heard, so have we seen, in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which is established forever. Your name, O God, like your praises, reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with victory. Amen. And I invite you to remain standing as we sing our morning song, number 568 in your hymnal, Christ for the World, we sing. You may be seated. And for those of us gathered here in person, for those of us who are worshiping with us online, I just invite you to take a, mo- a moment to still yourself. If there's something that, that you like to hold on to as you pray, you can get that out. If you're able to kind of still and quiet, quiet the environment at home as much as you might be ab- able to, you're invited to do that as well. And let us join now together in a time of morning prayer. Good morning, God, and thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this place and all of the places, Lord, where we are gathered this morning. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that is able to unite us as one in fellowship and worship this day, wherever we may be. God, we, th- we thank you for the freedoms that we have here in this country. Lord, we ask, we ask that we no longer take them for granted. That we, that we exercise the right that we have to worship. That we understand and we recognize that all men and all women have truly been created equal, God, in your holy, perfect image. God, inspire us this day and this week to go set about the work that you have for us, to restore equal relationships for all who surround us. 
Lord, be with us in our mission. Be with us on our journey. Come, Holy Spirit, and inspire our words and our actions. Bring liberty and freedom for all. And make that a reality. Lord, we lift up the members of this church family who are traveling today and in the coming days, God, we ask for your blessing and your protection over them so they arrive safely and they return safely. And we lift up the members of this church family who are mourning and grieving this day. Those who are battling all sorts of health issues, those who are fighting so hard to recover and those loved ones whom we have lost in the past week or so, Lord. We lift them up. We thank you for their influence. We ask you to wrap their families, God, in your loving care and compassion. As so many are able to sit back and celebrate today and tomorrow, Lord, we ask that you comfort those who feel alone those who feel isolated, those who are facing perhaps the first sort of break or a holiday or getting their first rest in some time. God, we ask that you are at work even when we may be at rest. That you are always working to shape us, to mold us, to guide us, to go to the places, God, that you would have us go. God, we love you. We thank you. We close this prayer this morning, God, praying the prayer taught to us by your Son, by our Savior, our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. All of your people praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Um, This is new for me, so be patient. I am not Miss Kelly or Miss Sarah, but if the kiddos want to come up, they're welcome to join me. Your brothers and buddies. (laughs) Come on up, Noah and Evelyn. Brooks, are you sure you don't want to come? Okay. You guys are also patriotic today. You guys have a good week so far? Yeah? All right, so I have a question for you. I've got Miss Kelly's bag. It's mine, but I'm following her routine, all right? Yeah. Do you guys ever help cook at home? Yes. You yeah. just, do you ever follow a recipe? No, I just make my own things. You make your own things? I bet they're delicious. Yeah. You help me bake? Do we follow a recipe, or do we just throw it all in? Are they hard or easy? Pretty easy if you follow the directions. Okay, so I have two things in my bag. I know, you got a sneak peek. Pet student. So, your mom has that book? All right, so the first one I have, we're going to talk about how Paul went to Rome, and he wanted to spread the good news. Side note later. So, Paul got to share the good news in Rome, but he got imprisoned, but he got imprisoned at home while the other disciples were in jail. So, Miss Kelly suggested discussing how sometimes you have just a little bit of time to share the good news, so maybe like the 10-second recipe book versus the original book that a lot of you might know, The Joy of Cooking, <laughs> that you may have gotten as a wedding gift or your mother had given you. Um, so, so often we have an opportunity to share the word of God in 10 seconds or so, maybe a little bit more, rather than giving them 
the 12 page recipe for pizza that might be six pages in here. You know what I mean? So we want to talk about what kind of opportunities can we have to share the good news of Jesus? Maybe how we love people, maybe how we share, maybe how we send them a note to let them know we're thinking of them. Do you guys think that's a good idea? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's go through the week and think about ways that we can share the good news of Jesus. Even if we don't dive deep into a big book, we can kind of give them an idea of what Jesus is. Yes, Noah? You can send a note or make a paper heart to show I love you. That is a great idea. All right, will you guys pray with me? Okay, you can read it later. Okay. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to be with these young servants of yours. We love you, Lord. We are thankful for the knowledge we have and the hope we have in your promise. May we share this news with all so that we can rejoice together. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We are still not back to the point of passing around the offering plates just yet. You will notice the plates are still outside there in the narthex. But we do present for all of us this morning a musical off offering from our very own Mary Ann Jordan. At the conclusion of that, we will pray over all of the gifts and offerings that have come in. Then we will sing the doxology. Amazing God, we thank you so much for the gifts and for the givers, for everything, Lord, that comes into this place that you take and bless and send out to further your kingdom. Lord, we ask that we are being wise stewards. We thank you for being so generous to us. We ask that we may be more generous with one another. Lord, we, we, th we thank you for all of the support. We thank you for all of the sacrifices of so many that allow us to be here this day, Lord. We are so great. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Please stand. Friends, you may be seated. Our scripture lesson today comes from Acts. You're in chapter 28, verses 17 through 30. Yes, friends, this is the final, the final 14 verses of the book of Acts. And I invite you just to hear, hear this word, hear the conclusion of Acts. Three days later, He called together the local leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors, yet I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. When they had examined me, the Romans wanted to release me because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to the emperor, even though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is for the sake of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. They replied, we have received no letter from Judea about you. And none of the brothers coming here has reported or spoken anything evil about you. But we would like to hear from you what you know, for for with regard to this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. After they had set a day to meet with him, they came to him at his lodging in great numbers. From morning until evening, he explained the matter to them testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Some were convinced by what he has said, while others refused to believe. So they disagreed with each other. And as they were leaving, Paul made one further statement. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your ancestors through the prophet Isaiah, Go to this people and say, you will indeed listen, but never understand. And you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn, and I would heal them. Let it be known to you then that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me, friends? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Lord, come fill this space and all the the spaces where we are gathered. God, your children are gathered. We're waiting. We're longing to hear from you. Lord, come take these words. Come take this time. Lord, I ask that here in this moment that I might decrease so that you will increase. Lord, come speak to us the message that you want us to hear this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we have spent over the past month in the book of Acts. 
started way back on Ascension Sunday and then Pentecost and all of this past month, and much has happened. Much has happened in the life of the early church that Luke records for us and recounts in Acts. Since the Holy Spirit was poured out there in the upper room, thousands, thousands of people have repented and been baptized into the way. Some disciples have been killed. Some have gone on very, very long mission trips. There's been persecution, and there has been violence. There have been people in prison. There have been successes, and there have been failures along the way. And that's one of the amazing features of the book of Acts. Luke keeps it pretty real for us. He doesn't sugarcoat the bad stuff, and I don't think he really embellishes the good stuff either. He presents us with the stories as he has witnessed or as he has been told. And and I think it's worth reminding us, or at least it's worth our consideration, that these events in the book of Acts take place over many, many years. It may read like a page-turner one week Paul's here, one week Paul's here, one, one day Peter's here, one day it's here. This is, a, this is years. This is years and years of waiting. Paul spends a lot of time hunkered down in some of these cities. Some of his trips take a very long time. So this journey from Ascension, from Ascension Sunday to Pentecost, where we find ourselves today, at the very end of the book of Acts, with Paul's arrival in Rome, it's a very, very long journey. Paul has been through a lot. And keeping this in mind is, as I think, what makes what Paul does here today in the scriptures that we read just so compelling. Paul has given this same speech. He has made his defense. He has attempted to clarify how Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. He's made this appeal hundreds, if not probably thousands of times already. But here he is, surviving a shipwreck, long boat journey, getting bit by a snake. Here he is arriving in Rome, still ready, still prepared to fulfill his calling. He's not, he doesn't seem angry or impatient, but he's ready to just keep preaching. He's teeing his sermon up again for another set of Jewish leaders, for another audience. I wish, I wish that I had the patience and the fortitude of Paul. Ask my kids how much they wish that I had the patience (laughs) and the fortitude of Paul. I I am okay to explain or teach or coach something. Once is fine. Two is okay. By the third, I know they're not getting my best. By the fourth, usually I tell them to go ask mom. But Paul, time and time Again, just keeps preaching, just keeps teaching. He never seems to give up. He never seems to be deterred. I, I know in my, pretty young in my career, I've not had to repeat a lot of my same sermons yet. I know I'm going to get to to a point where I'm probably going to settle in with some things that are familiar and start to hit on some of the highlights over and over again. And I know, knowing me, I'm going to find that boring. I'm going to try to improve, embellish, critique, and change things as I go. That's not to say that Paul has written this down and just reads from note cards in every town that he goes in. But the persistence, the patience 
his methodical approach and his attitude should be so inspiring. He never, in spite of some of his language at times, he never gives up on his Jewish brothers or sisters. He's labeled as the apostle to the Gentiles, but he never quits reasoning and reaching out to his fellow Jews. In almost every city he enters into that Luke tells us all throughout Acts, Paul's first stop is almost always the synagogue. He goes and reasons with his brothers and sisters first, and then it's to the the homes, then it's to the marketplaces, then it's out to the Gentile cities. He has a pattern. He has an approach. He knows what works for him. He understands, I think, his calling and his task incredibly well. I think that we can look back and say that Paul was the original embodiment, what we would refer to now of as a both and church. So both slash and church. You know, a church that strives to be excellent and offer a full range of what a church should be, both in person and online. Both in the brick and mortar birds, in the brick and mortar building and digital. That gathers both on the Sabbath day in the sanctuary and weekdays in the tavern or the marketplace, whatever it may be. It's never just one or the other, but both. Paul, all throughout the book of Acts, paints a wonderful picture of what the church should be doing as a way of including everybody who God loves and everybody who God creates, because guess what? They're not just going to be found in one place. I've talked a lot so far about just acts in general. But our lesson today has a couple really key elements for us as we wrap up our look at Acts. Just think about the, conclu- the, the final couple of verses that we shared today. For two years, for two years, Paul stays there in Rome under house arrest, paying for his own expenses and teaching anyone and everyone who comes to see him with boldness and without hindrance. I imagine over two years, there were a lot of people who came to see Paul. Jews, Gentiles, Greeks. Who knows? Who knows how many people came to see this Paul guy? And he greets them, and he teaches them with boldness and without Hindrance. Paul is a man who has been beaten, stoned, shipwrecked, flogged, and nearly assassinated on numerous occasions. And here he since con- confined on house arrest, greeting everyone who comes, willing to teach him, to preach to him, to explain who Jesus is and why he's so important. All the stuff he's been through, the previous 27 and a half chapters of the book of Acts almost seem to have no bearing on Paul as he goes forward because he's so committed to his mission. He knows what he's supposed to do. He knows what the Holy Spirit is doing through him. So he doesn't let any of the bad stuff affect him. It doesn't change who he is. It doesn't change what he does. I think there's much. There's much that we can learn from Paul's example here. We've talked a lot already this morning about the determination and the persistence that Paul displays, even up through these verses today. I think we've covered covered that. But there's another subtle lesson, I think, for us here as well. I want you to hear verses 20 through 22 Again, 
For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and to speak with you, since it is for the sake of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. So that's Paul speaking to the Jewish leaders who have came to see him. Then they replied, We have received no letter from Judea about you, and none of the brothers coming here have reported or spoken anything evil about you. But we would like to hear from you. How often, how often do we begin to fear or expect the worst when we know there's going to be a difficult con conversation ahead of us? We, we begin to think about what the other person is going to say, what they might think, what they might do, and we start to kind of get ourselves psyched out, right? We begin to doubt ourselves begin to question maybe who we are, what we're meant to do, what we're capable of. But here in just these couple of verses, we have an, an example that every new opportunity, every new conversation may in fact just begin with a clean slate and a fresh start. I think Paul comes in with some presumptions that these Jews in Rome have heard about him and have formed an opinion. And much to Paul's surprise, they're like, no, we actually have heard nothing about you, but you seem smart. Some people seem to know who you are. We'd love to hear from you about Jesus. Rather than entering into a conflict, Paul's greeted with an opportunity, with an opportunity to spread the gospel in a new way to reach more people. So often we fear entering in to that new con conversation because we're not sure how it's going to go. I think more often than not, much like Paul, we can be pleasantly surprised that if we're open and we're honest and we're sticking to our call, we're fulfilling our mission, we're going to enter into a lot of places that are going to welcome that. I also want to make sure we note what it says in verse 13 and in verse 23 as well. Verse 17, sorry, verse 17 says that three days later, he called together the local leaders of the Jews. So Paul has arrived in Rome. He's gotten some help along the way from his friends. He arrives in Rome, and, and he rests. He rests. He takes three days to recover from the voyage and recover from the shipwreck. In verse 20, 23, after his first meeting, it says that after they had set a day to meet with him, they came to see him at his lodging. So, Paul arrives in Rome, worn out, no doubt exhausted, and he rests first. Then he meets with the Jewish leaders. They decide... They decide to have a meeting, and they agree upon a time and a place and a day to do it. And, and I offer this up for us today because I think it contrasts a lot of what the book of Acts has to offer for us. Rest assured, there is a time and there is a place for chance encounters and for spontaneous, spirit-driven evangelism. Make no mistake about that. That is very, very important. But I think there's also a time for preparation. And there's a time for planning. And there's a time for rest before we engage in discussion upon what could be some volatile topics. Now, tie this into the recipe and the kitchen theme that Miss Melinda off offered for us today. This is the mise en place, if you're Bands of cooking in the food net, 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 network. Mise, mise en place being the French idea of you get everything you're going to need out first. And you get org organized. You get your ingredients ready. You get your tools in place. You get your mixing bowls out. That way you're not running around all over the kitchen when you go to cook. You get everything you need out first and you get ready. I think these verses today give us an idea of Paul getting ready. He takes some time. He gets prepared. He gets some rest recovers from his journey, then he calls the meeting, then they plan on a time to sit down and talk, because he knows that not everyone's going to agree with him, not everyone's going to believe what he says, and he wants to be at his best 
when they have that conversation. In other words, we could say that Paul is not scrolling through his social media feed in the middle of the night when he's tired and he's hungry or he's hangry and he's just blasting people who he doesn't agree with. He knows enough to sit back. He knows that he needs to recover. He knows he needs to be ready. He knows he needs to be prepared. This is an instance where he gets to go engage in a friendly setting, a comfortable setting, and he wants to take advantage of that. So, we offer up all of these reminders from Paul here at the conclusion of the book of Acts, just as, as something to kind of get us thinking and considering how that we, A, conduct ourselves, and how we follow through with our own spirit guided missions, our own spirit-given tasks? Are we thoughtful? Are we methodical? Are we sticking to it? Are we persevering? Are we being patient? And friends, and I, I ask you those questions, and I ask myself those questions knowing full well how hard that this mission is, how hard that life can get. We lift up these verses. We spent this last month in Acts just to offer us some examples to learn from. Acts actually reminds us of the power of ordinary people when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon them. Acts remind, uh, reminds us of the power that when people come together in unity, that they can do amazing things. So many examples, so many reminders that we're not doing this mission stuff alone. We have each other. Go back and read through Acts and see how many times that people have come to Paul's aid. And that's just one example. Time and time again, people provide for his needs in prison over and over. His mission is hard, his journey is hard, and he has help along the way. What a great reminder that Acts provides for us there. Not only that, not only in the text, not only in the scripture, friends, we also have the sacrament that is holy communion that we will partake of here in just a moment. Friends, this is the holy meal that unites us together as one, that strengthens and sustains us physically and spiritually for the work of pursuing our call of making clear to the world just who Jesus is, why Jesus matters, here, now, today, maybe more than ever. So I invite your friends just to take a moment here. Think about, think about your mission. Think about your tasks. Think, think about if maybe you're getting just a little bit weary. And if there's someone you can invite to come alongside of you. If we treat communion today as what it is, a way of refueling ourselves to pursue God and to grow his kingdom, friends. Let, let, let's pray, and then we're going to move into a time of communion. Lord, we thank you so much for the examples that you've given us in your holy scriptures. We, we thank you for the courage and the bravery of people like Paul, who let nothing stand in their way, who were so determined to preach the gospel that they risk hardship and injury. They go on long journeys with no guarantee of success, but God, they know that you are right there with them and guided by the Spirit. There's nothing that they can't do. There's nothing that we can't do. Because God, you are for us, not against us, with us every step of the way. May we be encouraged. May we be confident 
no matter what mission you have in store for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. We will be using the communion cups again today. Is there anybody out there who still needs one, who did not receive one on the way in? One of our young ushers is going to go get a basket, and he'll come bring those around. So you can just leave your hand up for a second. We will be sure to get your communion cup to you. Who still needed their communion cups? Thank you. Right over there. Oh, you got it? Okay. All right, I believe we are good. Thank you. If you want to take a mo- moment, start working on the little film, start working on the foil, you can do that. It's a little bit of just a personal note. This is, this is my grandfather's book, book of worship. I got it about a month or so ago as he was moving in with my aunt from his uh, apartment. He said he didn't need it in, 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 in anymore. I, I don't think he got to use it much as this was put out towards, towards the end of his full-time career. This is the first time I'm going to get to use this to serve co- communion today, and I think that is pretty awesome. So. Your responses can be found leave on page 15 of your hymnal. They're in your worship guide as well if you would like to follow along. For those of you at home too, if you got your cracker, your bread, your juice, or whatever, you are welcome to partake in communion with us as well. Because in the United Meth- Methodist Church, friends, this is not our table. This is God's table. This is the table of Jesus Christ. Then you are welcome to participate. Even if you feel like you've never encountered Jesus before, we believe that this meal is a means of grace, and you can encounter Jesus through partaking in this meal. So friends, you are invited, and you are encouraged to be with us. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, nor shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign, at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, 
He took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, all of you. This is my body, broken for you. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to you. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this and drink, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant. My blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. You can have your... L, L elements, friends, if you have that ready. I invite you to take the wafer and re remember, friends, this is his body broken for you, for me, for all of us. You may partake. And then, friends, this is the cup, the cup of the new covenant. His blood shed for the forgiveness of every single sin that was, is, or will be. There's power in his blood, friends. You may partake. Let us pray. God, God, we thank you for this holy meal. We thank you that even up until the very end, Jesus, you were serving. You were breaking the bread. You were passing the cup. You were washing the feet to provide for us the example of how we also should live and serve each other. May this meal be used to strengthen us, to nourish us in every way possible, God, to send us out from this place today, shining your light, reflecting your image, representing your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, I invite you now to stand for our sending song today. It's number 670 in your hymnal, Go Forth for God. You can find it in your online worship guide as well.
Christians, as you leave today, go forth in peace, in love, in strength, and in joy. If you're going to go out to celebrate, please do so responsibly. I'd like to see everyone back here next Sunday with all of your fingers still attached. Next Sunday, we return to our normal worship schedule, 8.30 a.m. on the Asbury Lawn, 9.30 in the sanctuary, 11 o'clock in the Family Life Center. Grant us, O Lord, that what we have said with our lips we might believe in our hearts, and what we believe in our hearts may we practice in our lives through the power and the love and the mercy and the grace that comes from God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My friends, you may go in peace. Amen.